So if you are really into your smartphone gaming, be it a bit of PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty, Fortnite or whatever, and you want a dedicated gaming smartphone to give you the edge over the opposition, then the great news is we've got two new gaming handsets hitting the UK for just over 500 quid. Say hello to the Black Shark 3 and the Red Magic 5G. Now both of these gaming smartphones offer strong value for money, you get premium specs and some dedicated gaming features for around half a grand, whereas normally for these kind of premium features you'd be paying at least seven, 800 quid. So we're going to do a full comparison now between the Black Shark 3 and the Red Red Magic 5G to see which one has the best specs and features and also which one offers the best gaming experience too with a bit of PUBG action. And for more on the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first of all of course these two gaming smartphones are absolute beasts giving you a nice spacious screen to see all of that action when you're in a game. The Black Shock 3 is a mite bigger at 6.67 inches compared with the 6.65 inch Red Magic 5G. Now you do get reasonably chunky bezels surrounding the displays but at least the displays themselves are absolutely unfair fitted with any kind of notch or pinhole camera or anything like that as you would expect from a gaming smartphone and also the screens are completely flat as well you don't get the curved edges which is great for something like PUBG where you tend to have on-screen controls around the very sides but of course it's when you flip these bad boys over and take a glimpse at that arse end that it becomes immediately apparent that yes these are indeed gaming smartphones it's a shiny glass finish on both the Black Shark 3 and the Red Magic 5G although you do get some aluminium bands in here on the back of the Black Shark 3 as well and aluminium edging on both of these gaming smartphones and both phones sport a funky X pattern as well, uh, which mirrors the aerials which are actually built into the handsets themselves. They both weigh around 220 grams, so they've definitely got a decent heft to them. And as you can see there, they've both got that typically flashy LED action around back as well. Again, a game and smartphone staple. Of course, in the case of the Red Magic 5G, the, uh, the name actually lights up as well as the logo down below, and you can configure them completely separately. So you've got full customization over those LEDs on both the Black Shock and the Red Magic 5G, with the jolly name of Colorful Light Effect. The personalization is very limited actually here on the Red Magic 5G, certainly compared with the Black Shot. You've got a couple of little options you can tweak, but you can use it as a notifications light for all kinds of stuff, including incoming calls, notifications. Uh, when you're actually charging, you can have it light up, things like that. Similarly, on the Black Shark, you can use it as a notifications light. You can also basically turn your Black Shark into a funky portable disco when you're playing your music or whatever. And I prefer the Black Shark's Light and Effects Editor as well, which allows you to choose from a variety of different effects. You can uh, play around with the color, the direction of the flashing, the speed of the flash and all kinds of stuff. Now, as I mentioned before, both of these smartphones spot a screen basically the same size. It's a 6.65 inch here on the Red Magic 5G, 6.67 inches on the Black Shark 3. And it's a full HD plus panel on both of these handsets as well. It's 2340 by 1080 on the Red Magic, 2400 by 1080 on the Black Shark 3. So basically, you're looking at the same level of detail whenever you're viewing a bit of Netflix action or you're kicking back with a game. You can actually play around with the display output in the settings on both of these smartphones as well. So you can boost the colors, make them nice and punchy and vibrant. Or you can produce more natural looking hues for more realistic visuals. But I've got to say when I was viewing movies the Black Shark 3 definitely impressed me more. It supports HDR10 plus content so a really nice sharp contrast and really good realistic colors as well. It's got a just noticeable color difference score of just 0.55 so it's almost as strong for accurate color reproduction as the OnePlus 8. The Red Magic might not be quite as impressive as far as the color reproduction and the contrast scores but it's definitely the brighter of the two panels so if you're going to be doing a lot of gaming outdoors I would recommend that one. And as you'd expect from a dedicated gaming smartphone and to be fair pretty much any premium smartphone these days you do get a higher refresh rate as well it's a 90 hertz display here on the Black Shark 3 goes up to 144 hertz though here on the Red Magic 5G and sure no there aren't many supported games that will go all the way up to that 144 hertz level but at least it's future proof and in case we do get a few more Android titles rolling out in the next couple of years. As for the audio, well, both of these blows have a stereo speaker setup, although on the Black Shark 3, both of those speakers are firing audio at your face, whereas on the Red Magic 5G, the bottom speaker is actually mounted on the edge, so it's not quite as good. But you do have a headphone jack on both of these smartphones, as well as full Bluetooth support, as well a bit of Bluetooth 5 action for your wireless connections. Now let's talk more about the software side of things. Both of these gaming smartphones rock the latest Android 10 OS, but they've also got their own custom launches on top, which add their own bonus features so for instance both of them offer an always on display which is fully customizable on the security side you've got an in display fingerprint sensor on both of these smartphones reasonably nippy and responsive and while both of these gaming phones offer up your typical android desktops everything for when you're actually using the phone as a phone you've also got a dedicated gamer ui as well which you can access by actually flipping a physical switch on the side of the handsets 
At a glance, the Shark Space and Red Magic UIs are very, very similar, allowing you to flick through all of your games and quickly load one up. But when you dive under the surface, the Shark Space one offers much greater customization options. The level of detail that Shark Space goes to is just absolutely insane. And you can actually customize the game configuration for each individual title as well, rather than just an all encompassing general settings. Everything from the touch response to the audio output and even the network settings as well. So, for instance, you can make 5G a priority, or you can have it automatically switch in between 4G. G and 5G depending on the best possible reception. Here on the Red Magic UI you've still got customization options but you can't personalize the settings for each individual game, they're just more general settings. But anyway, once you're done fiddling around and tweaking stuff and basically pissing about, it's time to jump on into a game and no worries on the performance front on either of these smartphones as you would expect. They both sport the latest Snapdragon 865 Super Premium chipset and it's backed by either 8 or 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM so nice and fast and pretty energy efficient as well. I got busy with a good bit of benchmarking using the Gamebench software on both the Black Shark 3 and the Red Magic 5G while playing a good bit of PUBG and as you'd expect perfect performance throughout no problems even on an extensive 2-3 hour gaming session. PUBG Mobile ran of course at the maximum frame rate setting and they stuck basically to 60 frames per second on both the Black Shark and the Red Magic throughout, dipping only as low as maybe 56 or 57 frames per second at any given time and obviously that was indistinguishable. And both phones did start to get pretty toasty after just about sort of 20 30 minutes of action you do actually have a turbo fan built into the red magic 5g though to assist with the coolant and this was in action while you're gaming although you can manually control it all and it is quiet enough so it won't disturb you or even somebody who's for instance sleeping next to you if you're gaming at 2 a.m here on the black shark 3 you've got the sandwich structure coolant system which basically has coolant pipes housed on both sides of the board but both phones as i say they do get warm but not properly hot even when you're gaming for a long time i certainly wasn't have my fingertips singed or anything like that. And the Black Shark 3 does actually come with an optional coolant fan accessory which can be slapped on the back. This does need a constant USB connection and it is pretty pointless unless you're literally going to be gaming for hours with the phone plugged in and fast charging. It certainly is effective but it's also kind of annoying and very bulky. Now you get a nice nippy 240Hz touch response rate on the Red Magic 5G so basically every time you pork swipe the screen whatever you'll see an instant response. The touch response rate is actually boosted to 200 70 hertz on the Black Shark 3, but I honestly did not notice a difference between the two at all. They're both great. Both phones also, however, serve up an optional physical controller which can be bolted onto the side, and that adds a physical thumbstick and buttons if you prefer that to on screen controls. I also really, really love the capacitive trigger buttons built into the top edge of the Red Magic 5G. You get an instant response from them again, they are very effective in the likes of PUBG Mobile. You have to actually upgrade the Black Shark 3 to the Pro model if you want triggers built into that as well, although in that case they are actually physical buttons rather than capacitive efforts. Rather than having triggers, the Black Shark 3 Standard Edition just uses Power Touch instead, which isn't quite as good. This basically involves force pressing on either the left or the right edge of the display in order to have a similar sort of trigger effect, but you can accidentally trigger it when you're, for instance, startled in a game of PUBG Mobile, so yeah, not quite as good. But the good news is, if you want to be gaming on the go, well, both the Red Magic 5 5G and the Black Shark 3 support 5G and you got Wi-Fi 6 support as well so they are proper future-proof. As for the battery life, well there's not much of a difference in the capacity between these two cells. You get 4,500 milliamp battery on the Red Magic 5G versus 4,720 milliamp on the Black Shark 3. However, I did find I could get around 5 hours of constant gaming on the Black Shark 3 on a full charge, whereas that drops to around sort of 4 to maybe 4.5 on the Red Magic. And that's because of course it's got that physical fan to power as well as everything else. The Red Magic 5G is pretty fast to recharge in as well with a 55 watt fast charge option. Uh, so if you use the bundle charger that'll give you a full battery from empty in about 40 minutes. However the Black Shark 3 does have it slightly beat again with its 65 watt wired charging, although this only really saves you about sort of 5 minutes or so for a full charge. Now both of these gaming blowers have their USB port for charging on the bottom edge. That means if you are charging and gaming at the same time that cable will get right in the way. It's right where your hand wants to be basically. The Black Shark 3 does come with an optional magnetic charging cable though which sticks to the back of the phone in order to charge it up. This means you don't need that USB cable jutting from the edge, although it's not quite perfect. It's very short for one, it's only about a meter long so you'll 
to be really close to the plug and also it is very easy to accidentally knock off with your fingertips while you're gaming. The Red Magic 5G offers a better solution in its Magic Adapter which simply shifts the USB port and the headphone jack to the back end of the phone well out of the way. So you can use whatever size cable you want and it'll stick in there nice and secure. But I have not had the chance to test this out so I can't verify whether it's actually any good. Now whichever gaming smartphone you go for you'll get a choice of 128 or 256 gigs of storage. It's UFS 3.0 so you yeah, absolutely load pretty quick but there is no micro SD memory card support with either handset. And last up let's take a look at the camera setup on both of these phones and it's a triple lens setup on both the Black Shark 3 and the Red Magic 5G though the Red Magic manages to cram it into a much smaller space as you can see there. Now both of these smartphones support a 64 megapixel primary lens although it's a Sony IMX686 sensor here on the Red Magic 5G and that swaps out for a Samsung GW1 here on the Black Shark 3. But whichever your choice you'll get nice natural looking photos as long as the lighting conditions are on your side those colors are realistically reproduced. We do have an AI scene recognition mode on both of these smartphones as well which can boost some of those more vibrant colors and give you a more attractive if not quite as natural look and finish. You've also got an ultra wide angle lens on both of these smartphones as well to get a very different viewpoint when needed. And if you like camera features you get absolutely stacks on both of these handsets as well including full pro manual controls if you want to play around with the likes of the white balance, the ISO levels and so on. You've got night modes, portrait modes, all of that kind of shenanigans and in fact here on the Red Magic 5G you've got a whole bunch of extra bonus stuff including a macro mode which uses the actual dedicated macro lens you have slapped on the back there. And good news if you like shooting a bit of home movie action as well because you can shoot up to 4K resolution video at up to 30 or 60 frames per second on either of these devices. And finally for that front facing selfie camera you've got an 8 megapixel effort here on the Red Magic 5G. The Black Shark 3 sees that and raises it to a 20 megapixel effort so a lot more detail. Both are absolutely fine for shooting your gorgeous mug. You've got the usual portrait mode and everything and if you want to shoot video you can shoot it up to full HD 1080p quality at 30 fps. And there you have it. That in a nutshell is how the Black Shark 3 and the Red Magic 5G gaming smartphones stack up. As you can see, solid value for money, no matter your choice, both very, very strong for the specs. Plenty of great gaming features as well. I prefer the Black Shark 3 for its general settings output. That Shark Space UI is absolutely fantastic for its customization. But which one do you prefer? Definitely be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a great week, people. Cheers. Love you.